I recently put out a video talking all about record box subscriptions with a view to hopefully answering the question of do you actually need to subscribe to record box in order to DJ. Now, little did I know at the time, because that was based on Rekordbox 6, that Rekordbox 7 would be coming out so soon afterwards. So this video aims to serve as a bit of an update to that previous video. Now, the actual pricing of the Rekordbox subscription levels have not changed, and a lot of the stuff that you could do in Rekordbox 6 you can do in record box seven. So we're not gonna cover off old ground here. This is really just an update video to talk about some of the new features that you get at the different price points. And hopefully, if you watch the first one and you watch this one, you can combine the two together to decide if you need to actually subscribe to record box. So let's get into it. Now, one thing to note when you download Rekordbox 7 is that, and this was actually quite surprising, is that Pioneer DJ, Alpha Theta, whichever you want to call them, is definitely trying to push as many people into paid subscriptions of Rekordbox as possible. Because when you first download Rekordbox 7, you get asked to pick a subscription plan. There is an option in the bottom right just to click to proceed and that's what I did. However, it now says at the top of my record box um, screen, it's a trial. So I'm a bit like, what's all this about? What have I signed up to? Because I really wasn't sure. Have I paid for something, you know, once the trial ends? But when you click on the settings, it actually says that I am only signed up for the free plan. So just bear that in mind, it is a little bit confusing and you can get away with just obviously going for the free plan, but um, it does try to force you to pick a paid tier. So in terms of the free plan then, what has changed? Well, not a whole lot. The view has changed in terms of the menus and stuff in Rekordbox and how you access your playlists. Um, but not a lot has changed. For free, you can still export stuff to a USB stick for use in your CDJs or you know, whenever you go to do a, a nightclub set and you're using the Pioneer CDJs or a standalone um, device like the RX3, for example. So not a lot has changed. You do get a couple of additions for free and that is what they're calling automatic classification. Sorry, I'm looking at my laptop here. Automatic classifications of music collections. I have absolutely no idea what that means, if I'm honest with you. Um, efficient track compatibility checking now what i think this is relating to is if you're playing say a track out um at 130 bpm and it's in a certain key it's going to analyze your collection for compatible tracks that might mix well together so you do get that for free as far as i can tell and also the other thing that's new is a layout that makes it easy to organize playlists now that is a bit of a subjective point I personally think this new version of Rekordbox, it's certainly gonna take a little bit of time to get used to. It looks a little bit more complex than the previous Rekordbox 6. For example, if you're used to say, making a playlist down the, the left-hand side and dragging and dropping tracks from your collection into your playlists, you can no longer do this in Rekordbox 7. Like, that is crazy in my opinion. I think they have done this on purpose to try and get you to subscribe because some of the additional features that I'm going to talk about in the paid subscriptions do make looking for tracks a little bit easier. So I think they've made this uh, a little bit more complex on purpose. You can, of course, still add tracks to a playlist from your collection. It's a little bit more long-winded. However, you're going to have to right-click on the track and then select which playlist you want to add it to. Now, if you own a Pioneer DJ controller or Alpha Theta controller, and it is a hardware unlocked device, check out the link in the description for the list of hardware unlocked devices, then you still do not need to subscribe to Rekordbox in order to access a load of the performance features. So it's brilliant that they're not forcing you to subscribe if you buy into you know, the, the hardware. So that's good, okay? And new for Rekordbox 7 is that you don't actually need your device connected 
in order to unlock those features. You can simply register your device in order to get access to all of those features, which is brilliant. The biggest change, however, comes if you don't own a hardware unlock device and if you are not subscribed to at least the Rekordbox core plan, so their base plan, which is £10 a month. So you've got free, and then the first tier of paid subscription is £10 per month. And this is where things start to get a little bit different compared to Record Box 6. And I think they've done this on purpose because they want as many people as possible to subscribe to a plan or buy into a hardware unlock device. But let me talk about this in a bit more detail. This will also unlock a view called the collection filter, which basically means that you can view your tracks like they are on a CDJ. So you have very simple menu items. So you can view very quickly by date added, genre. Um, I'm looking at it right now here. Artist and album. So they're, they're literally like a view, like a CDJ. As I said before, you can view your playlist on one menu and you can view your collection on another menu. And it's a little bit more clunky now in order to add music to a playlist. The other thing to note is, of course, you have access to your playlist on the free version of um, Rekordbox 7. However, if you want to access the column view, so say, for example, you have a folder of house music and within that folder, you have several playlists. You might have tech house, deep house, vocal house, et cetera, et cetera. OK, if you have a hardware unlock device or only if you're subscribing to the core plan, which is £10 per month, this then unlocks a secondary um, view called the column view. So you can see all those playlists within a folder next to your overall folder list. OK, I hope that makes sense. So there's just certain things that make life a little bit easier if you are subscribing or if you own a hardware unlocked device. In addition to that, if you have the hardware unlock or if you're subscribing to Core, you can also get automatic configuration of cue points. Now, personally, I don't think this is a feature that I'm going to be using because Rekordbox, in my opinion, analyzes beat grids completely wrong. And if it's now going to analyze the beat grid wrong and then put cue points in as well in the wrong places, it's just going to cause me a headache in terms of deleting those cue points, fixing the beat grid and then adding them back in again. I think for very simple house music, this is going to be brilliant. But 90% of the time, when I've got R&B, hip hop, dubstep, drum and bass, etc., all of my beat grids are all over the place. So in my opinion, not like an amazing feature. And I've viewed quite a lot of videos on YouTube looking at this feature and it doesn't, well, the first iteration of it anyway, doesn't seem to be that great. It's brilliant in theory because obviously it saves you a lot of time if you don't have to set your cue points up. But in practice, Rekordbox needs to get a lot better at analyzing stuff in order for this feature to be worthwhile, in my opinion. So if you are on the free plan, you obviously don't get access to this, but I don't think you're missing out. Moving on then to the creative plan. So the second from most expensive tier of Rekordbox. For Rekordbox 7 features, there are no new additional features, Rekordbox 7 specifically. Um, compared to what you get in the core or hardware unlock plan. So if you're thinking for Rekordbox 7, do I need to upgrade to creative to get even more features? No, you don't. Um, it's, it's pretty much the same as what it was before with those new features that I've already spoken about with the, um, the core plan and hardware unlock plan. There is, however, a jump to if you subscribe to the professional plan, which is the most expensive record box um, subscription offering. Um, £30 a month here in the UK. And this gives you access to collaborative playlists with friends. Now, in my opinion, I don't know anyone, number one, that has this top tier subscription. And number two, when would you use it apart from if you're going back to back with someone on a DJ set? Like if you wanted to see if your tracks are complementing theirs, 
I don't know any other use case scenario for collaborating with friends personally. So if, if you're someone that plays back-to-back -back loads and you know someone that has got also, because they're gonna also have to subscribe to the professional plan of Rekordbox, then it's brilliant, but apart from that, I don't really see a, a, a really useful use case for this. So there we have it, a very quick overview of some of the updates in terms of subscription uh, levels, okay? If you want an in-depth look of the actual features, there are plenty of videos on YouTube. I'll link a couple down below. Some particular favorites of mine are from Crossfader and BeatSource Tech. They go really quite into detail into the different features and how Rekordbox 7 works. But this is really just an update to my previous video about subscriptions and what you get for the different subscription levels with the new Record Box 7. Hope that you have found this video useful. Please give this a thumbs up if you have, and I will see you in the next video.